In this video, we're going to go over the hyperbola. So a few things to remember about the hyperbola is that in your standard form equation, the A goes with the positive quadratic term and B goes with the negative quadratic term. The center of the hyperbola is always HK. The A represents the distance from the center to the vertices. B represents the distance from the center to the covertices. Okay, I should say to each vertex. Okay, to each vertex. To each covertex. And I have, you'll see why I have covertices in quotes. Okay, so there are two different ways that a hyperbola could look, and that would be if the x squared is the positive quadratic term, or if the y squared is the positive quadratic term. Okay, so first we'll go through x squared. So first the standard form when x squared is the positive looks like this, x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Now, okay, x squared is the positive term, y squared is the negative term. So what that means is this is going to open left and right, okay? The center is actually not on the hyperbola, okay? Now, because x is positive, that means a, we can think of it as our major axis, our vertices fall on our major axis. Okay, so our major axis is horizontal because x is positive, okay, and x is horizontal. So the distance from the center, this is a vertex, this is a vertex, okay. This is the center, this has a length of a, this has a length of a, okay. So if I draw it, I guess I could draw it a little bit bigger, okay. So let's say that the center is right here, okay. That has a length of a, that has a length of a, those would be the vertices. Now your covertices, okay, whatever they were, right, you would move up, okay, that's b, that has a length of b, move down, that has a length of b. Actually, what you're drawing here, okay, your shape, if x is positive, if x squared is positive, your shape goes out, okay, it never goes in from the center. Now. These hyperbolas, this shape, is actually bound by something. I could make a box here, okay? There's actually this box that exists, and we're going to talk about it. And if I drew asymptotes through the center, or I should say if I drew diagonals through that box, okay, if I drew diagonals through that box, I would have the asymptotes that are showing what your end behavior is doing here. Your parabola is actually bound by these diagonals, okay? They're called the asymptotes of this hyperbola, okay? And if you look, okay, the asymptotes when it's x squared is positive, Okay, your asymptotes, we're going to write this in graph translation form. So graph translation form would be m times x minus h plus k, where h comma k is the center. The slope, if you look, you rise to get from, okay, remember if it's diagonal, it goes through the center and it touches the corner. You went from this point, okay, to this point. If this is called line 1 and this is asymptote 2, okay, if you look, for asymptote 1, your slope is you went up B units and when you went over A units. So that has a slope of B over A. For the second line that we have there, okay, we have down B to the right A, okay, so that's a negative B over A. So the equations of the asymptotes are plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k, okay? And so the vertices fall on the hyperbola. But notice, the covertices don't actually fall on the hyperbola. So your vertices, here's the center hk, right? You went 
to the right A to the left A. So that's H plus or minus A, comma K. And your covertices, your X coordinate stays the same, and it's just your Y coordinate that changes by B, plus B minus B. Okay, but this time the asymptotes, okay, there are asymptotes here. So when y squared is positive, it looks like this. y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. So the center is h comma k. Look, h always goes with x, okay? So this time, okay, let's say the center is right here. Since y is positive, okay, that means a, I'm going up. And I'm going down. That's A units. That's A units. Okay? My shape would go like this. Y, because Y squared is positive, and Y opens up and down. Now, this would have a length of B. Okay? B. B. Those would be the covertices. The covertices don't actually fall on the hyperbola. You could make this box. And what this box actually is, okay, these asymptotes, which are the diagonals of this box, which means they go through the corners, are actually going to be the bounds of this hyperbola. So this hyperbola would actually, if those are the, if those are the <clears throat> asymptotes, your hyperbola would actually look like this. Okay, so A and B are forming those asymptotes. And so the equations of the asymptotes here, very similar. It's going to be very similar to this, okay? Y equals M times X minus H plus K. Now, I'm just writing it in graph translation form of a line, but if you would like to take this and put it in slope-intercept form, you are more than welcome to do. You just distribute, okay? Now, let's look at the slope here. The slope... Here's line one, here's asymptote two, okay, asymptote one, asymptote two. You went to get from this point on the first asymptote to this point, which you touch both of those points, right, the center and the, and the corner of the box. You went up A units and you went to the right B units. For the second one, you went down A units and you went to the right B units. So that's plus or minus A over B. Instead of B over A, it's A over B here. Okay, that's the equation of the asymptotes. And then your vertices, okay, your vertices are on the hyperbola. From the center, it's up A and down A. So that's going to be H comma K plus or minus A. Okay, I could write it two separate. I could write that as H comma K plus A, H comma K minus A. And your covertices, okay, the reason I put it in quotes is because notice your covertices aren't actually falling on your hyperbola. Okay, that's going to be H plus or minus B comma K. Okay, the X, the Y coordinate isn't changing at all on your covertices. Okay, that's when X squared is positive and that's when Y squared is positive. That's what it's going to look like. So we're going to do two examples, okay, and then we're going to do a third example incorporating everything. So let's get started on the first example. So the first example that we'll do, okay, notice x squared is positive, okay? So notice it's a hyperbola because we have two quadratic terms and we have the negative there, so we know this is a hyperbola. Next, what we should pull out is the center, okay, h comma k. So we look for the x coordinate binomial, here it is. What makes that 0, 1, okay? What makes this 0, negative 2? So the center is 1, negative 2. Now, think about the orientation, okay? Is this going to be left and right or up and down? Well, x squared is positive, so it's going to be left and right. Now remember, a squared is always under the, qu the positive quadratic term. So the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. Remember, this is not an ellipse. It's a hyperbola. A is always just with the positive quadratic. It has nothing to do with one value being greater than the other, okay? So A is 4, B is 5, okay? Remember, it's just what goes with the positive, what goes with the negative. So if I draw this, okay, 1, negative 2 is the center. Okay? 
Okay, so I know it's going to open left and right, so I have to go to the right four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if I had to name the vertices here, okay, my first one, I just went to the right four, so that's five comma negative two, and I go to the left four. One, two, three, four. That's negative three comma negative two. Okay, now I'm going to draw my co-vertices, so I have to go up five, down five from the center. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I go up five, that means my x is staying one, and now I'm at one comma three, and one comma, and I go down five. One, two, three, four, five from negative two, so that's one comma negative seven. So now what I would do is, now make that box, okay, make the box. Okay, draw the asymptotes through the box. Remember, the asymptotes are the diagonals of the box. And now, which are your vertices again? These are your vertices. You should be opening horizontally, left and right, because x squared is positive. So now, you're bound by your asymptotes, which are the diagonals of that box. Okay? Now, this movement here, this movement was B, and this movement here was A. So that means the asymptotes are Y equals plus or minus B over A, so that's 5 fourths, times X minus H plus K, so that's X minus 1 plus K, so minus 2. So if you want to put your asymptotes, if you want to put your asymptotes into slope intercept form, you have to distribute here. So you can break it up. This would be 5 fourths times x minus 1 minus 2. That's going to be 5 fourths x minus 5 fourths minus 8 fourths. So that's going to be y equals 5 fourths x minus 13 fourths. That's the first asymptote. And then you do negative 5 fourths, I'll put that work up here, times x minus 1 minus 2. That's negative 5 fourths x plus 5 fourths minus 8 fourths, which would be y equals negative 5 fourths x minus 3 fourths. Okay, and those would be your two equations. Or you could just keep it like this. Okay, I'm okay with that. And that's what we have to graph in our hyperbola. Okay, for the y squared, okay, y squared is positive, okay, first thing we're going to grab, notice it's a hyperbola, is the center, okay, h comma k, h is with the x, what makes this 0, 1, what makes this 0, negative 4, y squared is the positive term, that means it opens like this, that's the vertex, that's the vertex, so, we're going to sketch, okay, center is 1, negative 4, so A is always under the positive quadratic, so take the square root of 9, that's 3, take the square root of 9, that's 3, they are allowed to be the exact same value. This is A, because remember, A is always under the positive quadratic term. So I'm going to move up 3, 1, 2, 3 down three, one, two, three, and these are my vertices. So my shape is gonna go up and down. I gotta go right three, I gotta go left three, okay? That's my, this is gonna be my box here. This time this box is a square. It's allowed to be a square, okay? Draw the diagonals. Which are the vertices again? The ones that are up and down are the vertices, so that's the shape of this hyperbola. Okay, now the vertices were up and down, right? So the vertices were, the one stayed the same, right? So that would be one comma negative one and one comma negative seven. And your co-vertices, these values right here that helped you make this, the, the box that created these asymptotes for you, okay, that's gonna be 4 comma negative 4, and we went to the right 3, right, and then we went left 3, so that's negative 2 comma negative 4, and your asymptotes, 
are going to be, remember it's y equals, and now I went, this is a, and this is b, so I went plus or minus a over b, right, x minus h plus k, so that's going to be y equals plus or minus 3 over 3, so that's plus or minus 1 times x minus h, so x minus 1 plus k, so minus 4. You don't have to write these asymptotes in slope-intercept form. If you'd like to, you can. Okay, so now let's do one more. And then that is it for the hyperbola. So we're going to sketch the hyperbola. That is negative 16x squared plus 9y squared plus 32x plus 144y minus 16 equals 0. Okay, so notice we're given the general form. We can't graph if we're in general form. So what we're going to need here is to convert to standard form. But let's just check and, and make sure what conic we're actually working with. So two quadratic terms, it's in general form. Two quadratic terms, one's positive, one's negative, so we know this is a hyperbola. Okay, so I'm going to put my positive one first. So 9y squared and then plus 144y, so I have to go into standard form here. I'm going to have to add something in, minus 16x squared plus 32x. I'm going to have to add something in, bring the 16 to the other side, right, add 16 to both sides. Whatever I add into the left, I need to make sure I add it to the right. So... I can't start making uh, my perfect square trinomial until the coefficient on the quadratic term is 1. So I'm going to factor it out. Factor out the 9. That's y squared plus 144 divided by 9. Okay, that's going to put us at 16y. And now I can make, I can complete the square inside here because the coefficient on the quadratic term is 1. Half of this is 8. 8 squared, that's 64. But I didn't really add 64 into the right hand, um, into this expression. I added 64 times 9, and 64 times 9 is 576. So I have to make sure I add in 576 to both sides. So now I need to complete the square with this, but I can't yet because my quadratic term doesn't have a coefficient of 1. So I factor out that coefficient. So now inside my quadratic term has a coefficient of 1. So if I factor it out, now I have to factor out of this term, so that's going to become negative 2x. And now I can add in a constant term inside the parentheses because a is now, sorry, I didn't mean to say a, the coefficient on the quadratic term is now 1. So now we can complete the square. Half of this is negative 1, square it is 1. So 1 makes a perfect square trinomial inside the parentheses, but I didn't really add in the value of 1. I add in the value of 1 times negative 16. So I have to make sure I add in negative 16 to both sides. Okay, 16 plus 7, 576 plus negative 16. That's just going to put me at 576. So now I can write each of these as a square of a binomial. That's going to be y plus 8x minus 1. Remember, it has to be set equal to 1, so we divide by 576. Okay, so now we're going to simplify each of these fractions. So we're going to take 9 divided by 576, see what we get. We get 1 over 64, so this is going to be y plus 8 squared over 64 minus x minus 1 squared. We're going to see what 16 over 576 simplifies to be. 36. So here's my hyperbola in standard form. So now now I can wrap. So I can pull out the center. The center is going to be 1 comma negative 8. Okay. So the center is 1 negative 8. Whoops, sorry. 
Okay, does this open? Okay, which is the positive quadratic term? Y squared is the positive. That means this opens up and down. Okay, so if I sketch this, Okay, 1, negative 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So take the square root of 64, that's 8. Take the square root of 36, that's 6. A is always under the positive, so A is 8 and B is 6. So I have to move up 8 and down 8 because the Y squared is the positive. So my vertices fall vertically, positive, okay? Up and down 8, so that's going to be... There, and then down 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so if we write down those coordinates, the vertices, okay, that's going to be 1, 0, and 1, negative 16. Then if I write down my co-vertices, okay, if I sketch them, I have to move out to the right 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And to the left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so if I just move to the left from 1 by 6, that's going to be negative 5, comma, negative 8. And the other co-vertex is going to be, I went to the right, so 6, comma, negative 8. Okay, now we make that box. Okay, remember... You make the asymptotes, whoop, which are the diagonals of this box, and so your hyperbola opens up and down. That's the vertex, that's the vertex. Okay, so there's your, per I'm sorry, not parabola, hyperbola. There's your hyperbola. And now the last thing are the asymptotes. Okay, so the asymptotes are going to be y equals plus or minus, that's a, right? That's a, that's b. So plus or minus 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3. x minus h, h is 1, so x minus 1 plus 8 plus k, sorry, x minus h plus k. So that's going to be minus 8. Okay, so that is it for graphing the hyperbola.